Well, hello there, everyone on the internet. This is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Today, we want to take a look at a popular topic, for me, a surprisingly popular topic, and that is what are the best guitars for someone who has small hands? Um, now, this is actually something that's come up as a comment on a lot of our videos uh, based upon like what do we recommend uh, being the question. I've also, after seeing that come up a few times, did some searches on the internet and saw a few uh, blog posts of recommendations for guitars for people that have small hands. So it occurred to us that this might be a good topic to cover. Before we go into a recommendation of guitars, I want to be perfectly honest with you. I don't have very large hands, okay? Some people have bigger hands than I do, and they can do things on the guitar that maybe is more of a challenge uh, to me, uh, but there are people who have smaller hands than I do that are more adept at navigating the fingerboard than I am. And so at some point, if we're being honest with the discussion, the size of your hand when it comes to playing guitar is not that big of a factor, okay? One of the best classical guitar players in the world, Andre Segovia, had fairly small hands. Um, I've got, you know, small sausage finger hands. I, I'm about five foot eight. I'm not very tall. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's me. But I've never really had that much trouble uh, once I learned something. And so here is an honest comment about the, the discussion. As you play guitar, you are going to struggle with anything that's new whether you've been playing for a little bit of time or a long period of time. As you play, when you stretch yourself to learn something that you don't currently know, it feels foreign, it feels alien at first, and you will struggle to replicate that. And so a good practice tip is that whatever you're learning, you learn it slowly. You learn it very slowly. And you keep playing it slowly until it feels comfortable. And then you slowly and gradually speed it up. And what happens is that you gain muscle memory, and so it feels fine. It's, it's less about the size of your hands than it is about proper technique and practice. Um, and, and so technique, you know, there's a proper way of, of putting your hand on the guitar, where to place your thumb, how to stretch and, and get chords, and alternative chord forms, depending upon how you're playing. And so as you develop and dive into the guitar, you will find that as you learn technique and you implement some of these practice techniques, right, these methods, uh, that you'll be able to learn a variety of things. I know that I'm learning something new when, when I'm practicing, it sounds bad. Um, or I'm just trying to play an electric guitar for you guys, which I'm not that adept at, and it sounds bad. You know, so I'm practicing, it sounds slower, I'm getting better, and a lot of that is the muscle memory that comes with that. Okay, so that's my caveat. That being said, uh, there's a large percentage of people who start playing guitar and don't continue playing guitar uh, because it's uncomfortable for them. Um, and so they, they kind of hit this wall and they stop. And I, I really want you guys to learn how to play guitar. And so... I'm making recommendations with this in mind. If we can lower the bar to get you to play an instrument that is comfortable from the get-go, then I believe that you will be excited about the instrument, you will stick with it, and you will reach that point where it's less about the dimensions of the neck and the size of the guitar and everything because you can play a variety of things because you've developed to that point. So. With that in mind, the guitars we're going to look at today are mostly going to be moderately priced guitars for someone who is, for the most part, starting out, and maybe you don't have the largest hand, so we want to help you find something comfortable. Take a look. Okay, so we are going to start where it makes sense to start, and that's with a small travel size guitar. Uh, when you look at some of these blogs that are out there that recommend guitars for small hands, you might see a page of travel guitars. That's lazy. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give you a video full of nothing but travel guitars. That's uh, obviously going to be suited for someone with small hands. Um, so we're going to look at a variety of things, but we're going to start here uh, for good reason because it helps to lay the foundation of what you should look for if you have small hands or you're looking for something very, very comfortable. The guitar that I'm holding is a baby Taylor. Now, Taylors are going to be featured somewhat in this video because they have great playability. And that goes to a point of what we're gonna be looking at when it comes to what makes a comfortable guitar for you. 
Uh, a Baby Taylor is a three quarter size guitar. It is a short scale. It has a 1 11 16th inch nut, which is just a little bit over 42 millimeters wide, okay? Um, they have a fairly flat radius of about 15 inches, or yeah, I think it's 15 inches right now, and a nice thin neck that Taylor's always been known for. When you are looking at a guitar, or more appropriately, if we can kind of imagine this, what your hand is looking at when it holds a guitar neck is not a single measurement. So I really want to stress that you don't look at a single specification when you're shopping for a guitar. Don't shop guitars based upon specs, please. We give them to you for a basis, but that's not how you should make your determination. Um, what your hand actually sees is kind of a compound uh, you know, calculation of a variety of things. Uh, what type of carve does the neck have? How deep is it? Uh, how thin is it? How wide is it? What's the radius or the curvature of the, the fretboard here? And how close are these strings to that fretboard? How far away are the frets from one another? So that comes down to the scale length. And what tension uh, or, or um, gauge of string are you using? So a guitar that has a uh, light gauge string or medium gauge string or heavy gauge string, that string is gonna be thicker and it's probably, depending upon which one it is, going to be closer or higher off from the fretboard. It comes down to how the guitar is set up. That curvature is going to tell you how comfortable it is to chord. And you know, a thin neck is not always a great thing. It comes down to the comfort of the carve of the neck. So you want it to be round, but not too round, flat, but not too flat. Something that fits the hand comfortably. If you grab an old vintage guitar that has a real pronounced V, for a lot of people, that's not very comfortable, but a soft V probably is. So you might see a V-neck and go, oh, that's not comfortable, but it might be, depending upon everything else. So this baby tailor, being short scale, the frets are closer together. It's a narrow nut. It's a thin neck, but it's not too thin. It feels comfortable in the hand, and the action is great. It, the strings are set up nice and low, and it's a light tension. So it doesn't take a lot of pressure to push the strings down. It's not a lot of space between each of the frets. You can bend the strings really easily. And so that's what makes it not only a great travel guitar, but a great guitar if you have smaller hands to grip, to get those chords, and to start your path learning how to play the guitar. We can move up a little bit from here and look at some of the other guitars. Check it out. So this is another Taylor. We're gonna look at three. This is a GS Mini, okay? There are a lot of guitars in this segment like the GS Mini, but this is kind of the original one that Taylor made. Like the baby Taylor that we just looked at, it's got a nice, comfortable carve on the neck, nice low action, the same width of the, uh, the nut, which means similar width on the neck, okay? The scale length is a little longer. We're moving closer to a full length scale. So the frets are a little bit further apart, but still, closer together than on um, a full-size guitar that would have like a 25 and a half inch scale length. Okay, so as you move up in the length of the scale, the frets are gonna move further apart. As you move down, they're gonna get a little closer together. And so this is often kind of a happy spot for a lot of people. Um, if you have small hands, you're probably also not very tall. It's very rare that someone over six foot has tiny hands. So if you have, you know, uh, if you're not very tall, something like this is probably gonna be comfortable for you anyway, and it's got a big sound. Now we've moved up a lot in price, but um, you get a lot of features for it. So this is a great guitar uh, that would be comfortable for you and great sounding all around.
And the last tailor on the list that we're going to look at is kind of at the top of our price point. We're trying to keep this down, but that would be the Academy Series. This actually moves to a full length scale, uh, but it's 24 and 3 quarters. Um, so it's still kind of on the shorter side. Um, it's a smaller body still. It's very comfortable with the armrest it has. Um, and it's still got that playability, that same neck carve, that same uh, nut width. So what we've done from a dimension standpoint on the neck, looking at these three guitars from Taylor, is they all have the same nut width. They all have the similar neck carve. They all have the same radius. They're all strung with the same uh, gauge of strings. The only thing that's really changed is the size of the body and the scale length. So the frets have moved a little bit further away and they and, and the, the tension has changed. And I just realized that they don't all have the same strings. The GS Mini actually has medium gauge strings, but because it's a shorter scale, it, they feel like light gauge. And so that kind of lets you know how scale length and string tension and gauge and everything kind of interact with one another. It's not just a, a zero sum. One thing affects another thing. Hope that makes sense. We're gonna go actually down in price and look at some other brands. So this is a very affordable guitar from Fender. This is the CC60 SCE. It is uh, available without a cutaway in electronics. It's just the CC60S. And this is part of their classic series that was redesigned and we've done full review videos on this. Here's the reason that I think these are great options for you if you have smaller hands. It is a full size guitar. Now this is a smaller body version in the CC. If you look at the CD, which is a dreadnought instead of a concert body, then that is a full-size dreadnought body. In either case, the scale length of all of these is kind of a hair short uh, from the, uh, a long scale, 25 and a half inches. It's 25.3. So it's kind of approaching that Goldilocks, trying to be kind of in the middle. It's not a short scale full-size guitar. It's not a long scale full-size guitar. It's kind of trying to be right there in the middle. And there's a few other things that they do. The nut width is 43 millimeters. Now, what that means is that it's just a hair wider than the tailors that we were looking at, but it's uh, much narrower than like a one and three quarter inch nut would be. Um, the other thing that it has is a very round uh, uh, radius in comparison to a lot of acoustic guitars. It's a, it's a 12 inch radius. So we're rounding the fretboard, okay? And it's got a thin but rounded neck. Um, the combination of all of those, along with light gauge strings and good action, makes this a very comfortable guitar to play. In fact, when these first came out, I did a comparison video with this in a Yamaha. And I had played some of the previous models from Fender before they redesigned it. And that was the thing that struck me the most. In addition to the improved tone that these had, was the playability. And it's not just one measurement, it's this combination of things that make it very, very comfortable for you to play. Um, so if you've got a smaller hand size, you're not gonna have any trouble uh, playing a, a bar chord because of the rounder radius. Um, you're not gonna have any trouble playing a G or, or stretching a few frets because uh, the scale's been shortened just a little bit. So um, if you get the cutaway model with electronics, you do get Fishman Electronics, nice cutaway, and uh, a bunch of different uh, finishes available. I like the black finish, I think it's pretty striking. But all in all, it's a very comfortable guitar um, and I think you'll be comfortable playing it. The last acoustic guitar I want to show you is the G9531 from Gretsch. We've done a full review on this guitar before. We've included it in some uh, 
top tens based upon price. I think this is a great guitar. It's a real sweetheart of a guitar, and I like these smaller kind of parlor size guitars that really have a vintage uh, look to them, but without a vintage feel. Just like the Fender, this has a combination of measurements um, that are actually very similar and uh, make up for a nice playability. Um, it's short scale, it's a 12 fret neck, which means the whole guitar is smaller. So again, if you are just smaller in stature overall, you're gonna find this very comfortable. It also sounds amazing and it looks beautiful. Um, it's got an Appalachian burst finish. It, that sounds cool and it looks great. It just has a real nice aesthetic vibe. Um, I get a kick out of the tortoise uh, shell overlay on the headstock. None of that aesthetically has anything to do with the playability on the guitar. But this is part of all of it, right? You don't just want a guitar um, that's like mud brown and, uh, and sounds terrible, but you're comfortable playing it. You want something that fits everything. So this has a great sound to it. It's got a great vintage aesthetic to it, and it's very comfortable to play. Um, and I think you'll be happy with it. It's not very expensive either. Um, let's see the price. Yeah, it's $399, it's 400 bucks for a solid top parlor size Gretsch guitar. Yeah, this definitely checks a lot of boxes. So I highly recommend it if you're looking for a guitar that's you know, gonna check those boxes for you. Got one last one that's a pretty compelling option for you guys learning guitar. Check it out. Okay, so for the last recommendation on our list, it's an electric guitar. Um, this happens to be a Squire Contemporary Strat with dual humbuckers and this awesome red finish with matching headstock. This is a rockin' guitar. But um, it really could be a variety of different electric guitars. This is a full-size electric guitar. It's a 25 and a half inch scale length. Why would I be recommending this? Well, electric guitars are uh, strung with a lighter strain gauge and they have um, a rounder radius, typically than most acoustic guitars. Fenders, for instance, have a nine and a half inch radius. It tends to be rounder than most electric guitars out there. Gibson and Epiphones are flatter. You move to like Ibanez and Jackson, they become much flatter. Um, PRSs have flatter radiuses and so forth. And that's all the curvature of the fretboard and that helps to determine you know, how comfortable it is cording, uh, among other things. But again, we're looking at a combination of stuff. The neck's comfortable, it's a modern C-shaped neck in this particular case. It's got a nice round radius, it's got light uh, strings on it. Most people find when they start playing guitar that an electric guitar is easier on the fingers because of that lightness of tension um, on the strings. They're, they're much thinner than on an acoustic guitar set. And if we're looking at the measurements, you, you might look at um, a set of strings and it'll be, uh, an acoustic set would be like point 12 to point 53, that's a light set. Um, on an electric guitar like this, it's 0.09 to 0.42. Um, and so it's much lighter um, than what you find on the um, acoustic guitar. And so it's easier to bend, it's easier to just fret. It requires a lot less pressure to hold down. Um, and of course you can do other things with it. One of the th things that I often recommend to people is that whatever excites you, you should play. If you are interested in acoustic guitar, you should buy that. And we've given you a lot of compelling options uh, in various price ranges to do that. But if you want to rock, <laughs> for those who want to rock, in other words, uh, plug it into an amp, get a lot of effects pedals, and you should buy an electric guitar. That's what you're gonna be motivated to play. That's what you're gonna be the most excited to pick up every day. So. There you have it. If you're wanting to learn guitar, uh, electric or acoustic, then these are some compelling options for you that have the small hands um, or you just want something that has in incredible playability. I will put to you once again that once you keep playing, you are going to improve your technique and you'll be able to pick up anything. I am the world's most mediocre guitar player, okay? But I own a variety of guitars they're all a little bit different. Some of them have thick necks and some of them have thin necks and some have wider nuts and some have narrower nuts and they're different radiuses and stuff. I play them for different purposes and none of them really um, challenge me. I don't go, oh, I have to play this one because I can't play that one. It doesn't work that way at a point. So stick with it. You're going to be able to pick up anything and enjoy it. And for now, hopefully these are great options to serve you. I hope you found this video helpful. Please comment below and let us know what you think. This is by no means an exhaustive list of guitars. There are a lot of great guitars out there with good playability and this combination of features that we're looking at. I just hope it helped you to understand what you should be looking at when shopping for a guitar with this particular need in mind. As always, I wanna thank you for watching. 
Hit subscribe, turn on your notifications so that you don't miss a single video. Thanks. What's up you guys? We're here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas, and we're very excited to announce the 30th Annual Guitar Wars. The theme this year is Shred the Halls, and it's taking place at Sam's Burger Joint right here in San Antonio on December 11th at 7 p.m. To enter, we want you to post a 30 second to one minute video of you playing and post it on Instagram and tag us at Alamo Music. We want you to use the hashtags Shred the Halls, Alamo Music, Play a Note, and Guitar Wars 30. There are three categories. We got electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and bass. Three winners from each category will receive an awesome prize, and the top player from each one has a chance to be featured on our YouTube channel. We want everybody to enter. There are no limitations on genres, but your submissions are due by December 1st. There are always some great players there, but we're looking forward to seeing some new faces. Show us what you got. Is that okay? We good? Ah. Hey everyone, I want to thank you for watching the videos that we produce. We put these out to help you choose the right guitar, um, understand some of the options that are out there, and to showcase some of the latest models that you may not get the opportunity to play in your local music store. If you have benefited or enjoyed watching any of our videos, then I want to tell you how you can help us to make more. We have created a new t-shirt just for guitar nuts like you and me. It's this. It says, I'm a guitar nut. So if you're like me, you are a guitar nut. And if you're also like me, walking around naked is probably an offense. So we want you to have this shirt. Follow the link, go to our website. These are going to be limited time and uh, you can put in a pre-order for it now. They will be shipping soon. And once they're gone, they're gone. So follow the link below and get your guitar nut shirt that only you and other guitar players will understand with a knowing week. Thanks again for watching.